I, I, for the, it, I'm less paranoid about it now, but especially for like the first year of our daughter's life, I was like, I would like put her in the crib, I would leave the room, and then I'd be like, oh shit, what if um, there's a mild earthquake and a book falls off the bookshelf and lands on a stuffed animal and pushes the stuffed animal onto her face and she suffocates, right? Like that, that's where my head was at. Now that she's basically two, I've relaxed a little bit, but like, <laughs> this. there are a lot of days where I, I woke up and I was like, oh, she should be crying by now. I guess she died. I guess she died in the night. And then you just sort of like sit there for a bit and be like, well, I'm just going to enjoy this little period before I have to face that. And then you wait, like, you maybe, like, brush your teeth, and then you go into the room, and she's just chilling, and you're like, oh, never mind. Good morning! <laughs> it messes up your, your amygdala, man. Having a kid, like, your, your amygdala permanently expands to, like, five times its normal size. It's not rational. The human brain is, is, not, is not okay. Yeah, people are saying my brain works the same way. I'm telling you. Yes, Kate has a, there's a baby cam video of me waking her up one day. And I like went in and was like, hi. And she didn't react at all. And I was like, that's fairly normal. So I like put my hand like on her chest and started to do like a circular rub. And she didn't react. And you can see on the baby cam, it was like a, I got hit by a lightning bolt. I was like. And then I just kept, I did it for like another five seconds. And she was like, <laughs> good morning. She was just chilling, honestly. 